Welcome to CNC Machinists Made Easy. I am Matt and we are doing a field trip today. Today's field trip is manual mills. And I've been thinking about this because I have a few field trips in mind in the future here that I wanna display how to find your reference points and your zeros. And before I do that, I'm not gonna have the camera on my fingers and dials and how these machines work. So let's get back and get a little look at this. I didn't even clean it for you. You know why? Because this is the real world and this is how it works. Nice, clean, everything with no chips. That's not always how it works. So I have a vise right here I clamped onto my table. I can go inward, outward, and the reason I have this little thing here, these are called parallels. A little dirty, we would blow them off and get, you definitely have to, you don't want a parallel like this with these chips, you'll have a crooked hole or you'll have a top. So the today's thing is what these machines are about is it's not making your table blow off. Uh, or, or putting your parallels down or anything like that. It's not about that. So we're not going to worry about the cleaning today. I'm just going to stand back. I'm going to show you a look at it. It's a nice machine right here. A nice manual machine to learn on. This is what I learned on a long, long time ago. It's quiet. I don't need 50 th motors running. And it's a perfect way for me to describe to you how these work. And it is an extremely good introduction on uh, how C CNC will work when we get into that end of it. All right, the first thing I'd like to share with you is we have a readout up here. This is an X readout. We know our X and Y coordinate. This is our Y readout. I apologize for the hard to see with the plastic there. Um, if you want to get more sophisticated, every readout has its own little features. So what we're going to do here is this is our X0, Y0. I'm not telling you how to read a readout. Like I said, there's all different ways. I'm just showing you what it is. This is right here is my handle for my X. As you can see, the X table will move. I have a handle over there as well, connected as you can see. You can go from either end. And I also have one of them that have a motor on them. I can just slow, slow it down to feed it real slow. If I have an end mill, see, that wants to cut real slow. If I want to push this button and override it for rapid. And that is my X, back and forth, back and forth, okay? In the old days, they had little dials here like this, and some people still use them. Each one of them graduates are thousands. I can loosen this up, tighten that up, crank it, and you see it reads zero. I can move it ten thousands, twenty thousands, twenty-five thousands. Back to, you got backlash there. Minus ten thousands, minus twenty thousands. These are how we used to do it in the old days. Had a very good idea how these thousands work. Um, but anyway, let's get back and take a look at the whole machine. Okay? What we have right here is a vise. You've got your X laid out. And here's your, here's your Y. Your Y does the same thing as I crank my Y this way. And that way you can see the readout moving. See the readout up there is moving. Just it's telling me how much I'm moving. Then you have your Z axis. Your Z axis is very similar to a drill press. It gives you a few numbers with graduates up here informing you about depth. I'm not gonna get into the auto feeds and stuff because it's just a manual mill. I'm gonna give you the general idea. Uh, future videos i'm going to be using this i'm not going to be saying here this and that i can move my z either like this or i can lock it in and i can come down here and move my z at more here's that dial again for the z moving it down if i want to make a spot face or up and as i do the table the whole unit will rise up or it will rise down the entire unit and that's to give you a general idea of the manual mills and there's some manual mills up here as you get the camera up here will show you, uh, you can have feeds and speeds and you can crank like snowmobile belts. Some of them have like this. Some of them you have to actually uh, manually change the belt. This is a very old machine, but it's an excellent machine to get you guys to understand the very basic concept and the introductory of machining. You got your forward, you got your backward. And the nice part about these mills, they can do things some of the machining centers can't even do today. If I want to, I'll come on over here. I'll loosen this bolt, this bolt, and this bolt. Take, only loosen it. And once I do that, I can crank that head up there, this nut right here, and this whole unit, back it up, this whole head will go this way or that way, as you can see these graduates. And I can literally cut a 45 degree with this head because the whole head will be like that. And I can make sure you tighten them back up. Or I can take these bolts right here, one, two, three, and four, and I can loosen them, just loosen them, and I can adjust this. As I turn this, these graduates right here, and this whole head 
will come this way or that way, and I can make 45 degrees on this way. These manual, mach these manual mills, <clears throat> these manual mills can do things that some of the state-of-the-art CNC machines can't do. And if someone tells you different, they don't know how to machine and they don't know they're machining. Now, remember, I do understand there's fourth and fifth axis, 3D cutting. You're not gonna beat that stuff. This is very rarely used in this shop, but there is a place for these things. And one good place is doing videos to teach people and get them introduced to this career. Best unit right here to get them introduced with. If I had a guy I was training up from the ground, he would be on one of these things for six months to a year. Get him to better understand things that a lot of guys today don't understand. So, having said that, oh, one more thing. I can also loosen, there's all kinds of bolts back there I can loosen. Come on back here, what the heck, we got the camera rolling. I can also loosen this bolt, this bolt, and I can, I can, there's two on the other side, and I can take this head and I can pull it where I can go way out. Now back up a little bit. I can go way out and I can hang a piece of end work. If I want to do a piece of an, a long piece, I'll, I'll bolt it right to this angle plate and it'll go right down there. And I can be working way out here, uh, my head. I can swing it around and swing it out. So I'm working out here. Very, in, these, these things are extremely universal of their day. When they were used, they could do some wild things with them. Uh, of course, you can't beat the technology of machining centers today, but they can still work for you and have a very important place in a machine shop. Uh, uh, and then one more thing I wanted to share. I can loosen these two bolts and I can crank this and you can, this whole thing rides on a track and this whole thing will go way out beyond my vice or back. Just like if I wanted to swing it this way and that way. I mean, I can do combination angles with these things if I know how to use them. Uh, again, you're not gonna compete with today's technology, but nevertheless, there is a place for these things in certain deals. We still use it for today. When our full machine shop, we've got a bunch of machining centers we'll introduce you to in the future. We got a bunch of uh, uh, machines in uh, lathes. We'll introduce you to some of them in the future, but this is a, a great way to dis, uh, describe it, display it. Um, and uh, now you understand a little bit more about manual mills. My name is Matt. Thank you for watching CNC Machinists Made Easy.